New findings. Seismic risk in the Pacific Northwest. How bad would a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake be? Well, we had one such earthquake about 350 years ago. Anywhere from a 8.9 to a 9.2 magnitude on the Richter scale with a tsunami that reached Japan. New findings clarify the seismic risk in the Pacific Northwest. In the last month, there have been several studies published which not only showed the dangers posed by this 1,000 kilometer long or 650 mile plate boundary, it highlighted where ruptures may also be most likely. The findings show that the cities of Portland and Seattle the earthquake could leave hundreds of thousands of properties damaged and destroyed and that in places like Seattle, which lies in a sediment-filled basin, shaking could be even more severe. Three years ago, Catherine Schultz's Pulitzer Prize-winning New York essay, The Really Big One, thrust the Cascadia subduction zone into the spotlight. While the convergent plate boundary which extends from Vancouver Island of British Columbia, Canada to Cape Mendocino in Southern California had been known to scientists for decades. The article renewed public interest and scientific focus. Major population centers would be exposed to significant risk. Two largest cities on the Pacific Northwest, Seattle and Portland, are home to several million people so in the event that we have a magnitude 9 Richter earthquake, which is what the Cascadia is capable of giving, that impact would be very severe. Part of this is due to proximity to the plate boundary to these urban centers, but also the geology. And let's remember that the Cascadia subduction zone and the Juan de Fuca plate even the San Andreas Fault are all in on the Ring of Fire, which encircles the whole of the Pacific Ocean. The city of Seattle, the nation's fastest growing city, lies in the Puget Lowlands on the shores of Puget Sound and Lake Washington. This location creates a tradeway, trade gateway also means the city lies atop a deep basin. And it's startling consequences for shaking, according to the recent study by scientists at the University of Washington and also the U.S. Geological Survey and University of Southern California. They looked at how buildings arranging from four floors to 40 stories high would shake, how they would sway in this nine magnitude Richter earthquake. They simulated this earthquake and the shaking comparing the ride in the Seattle Basin and outside it. And they found that within the basin, buildings swayed at least three times more than outside of the basin because of stronger, slower shaking. This could result in greater levels of damage throughout the city and longer recovery times. We're talking about Seattle here. In Portland, Oregon, which is about 145 miles south of Seattle. The situation is not much better than Seattle. The Oregon Department of Geology and Mineral Industries, Dogami, published an updated scenario of what a magnitude nine earthquake, Cascadia subduction zone quake event could do to the city of Portland. By assessing the shaking throughout the air, downtown metropolitan area, they found that approximately 38 to 39 percent, that's 235,000 of the city's buildings would suffer some level of damage. This emphasizes uh, that in the event of a Cascadia event, the impacts will not only be extremely severe, but they will be very widespread. Where is a great rupture most like to, likely to happen? In this event, scientists do not know where a rupture will strike. There are clues that point to areas which may be more susceptible. Two of these are locking and seismic tremor. 
as tectonic plates move against one another, stresses build up, and then finally the stress reaches a critical level, then the fault leaps forward and an earthquake takes place. Where the plates are locked, quote unquote, the amounts of stress can be built up and it's, uh, it can be built up at where it's greatest, therefore identifying the most locked portions of the Cascadia subduction zone gives light on areas of where the greatest risk is for earthquake, the earthquake to take place. In uh, the, the plate boundary, locking is greatest in Washington on one hand, Southern Oregon, Northern California the other. Northern Oregon shows quite a bit of locking. Seismic tremor accompanies slow slip events. It's common along parts of the Cascadia subduction zone. Tremor seems to be another indication that the fault is locked above a certain depth. It's firing off very small shocks and slipping just below that depth. In fact, over the last two weeks, tremors have picked up in northern Washington, southern Oregon, and northern California, as shown in the map by Pacific Northwest Seismic Network. We have a tremendous amount of earthquake activity in Vancouver, Vancouver South, Vancouver Island, Seattle, uh, Tacoma, Olympia, Portland, Salem, Eugene, Oregon, Bedford. You know, it's the whole thing is just shaking. Now, slow slope events are not like regular earthquakes, which last for tens of seconds, but instead they last for days to weeks. These events locate just below the locked portions of the fault and are accompanied with high frequency vibrations or tremors. Scientists are still not sure if periods of the, the periods of intense tremor, such as has occurred for the past two weeks, can presage large, large earthquakes. So does this mean that these are precursors to large earthquakes? They're still not sure. Strongly locked tectonic plates tend to produce the largest and most frequent megaquakes. And a recent study at the University of Oregon and University of New Mexico, geologists show that the higher levels of locking and tremor in certain parts of the Pacific Northwest are likely permanent features. Now, what does this mean for the Pacific Northwest, where we see all this activity recently? Seattle, Portland, and Vancouver, British Columbia of Canada, all lie within the zones of the elevated tremor and strong locking. Uh, in contrast, Eugene, Oregon lies inland of the portion of the megathrust that's not strongly locked and that produces less tremor. So the new evidence only confirms and highlights that the risk of Vancouver, Seattle and Portland and perhaps reduces it for Eugene. And uh, let's also keep in mind that Yellowstone, which is a supervolcano, is not that much far, that's not, it's not that far from the west coast which if it gives a nine magnitude earthquake, it would mean that uh, the, the uh, land would be shaking at least 2000 miles inland, which would be taking in the area of the uh, California volcanoes and also the super volcano of Yellowstone and the even huger volcano, super volcano of Wawa Springs. So that would be bad news if this uh, goes off. Let's hope that it's not a precursor and let's hope that um, it's just energy being let off, which is a good thing, and uh, that it releases that energy. Um, so we'll keep an eye out on this and if anything develops, we'll have updates on this. This is from Trembler Net.